Hello and welcome to Lightworks. In this tutorial we're going to carry on having a look at the keyboard shortcuts. Let's have a look at the jump backwards and jump forwards functions. That's the A and the S key on the keyboard. Pressing these keys will mimic the console transportation jump backwards and jump forwards. You can see the red current time indicator snapping to specific cuts across all the tracks. Not all of the cuts happen at the same time. So where we have split edits, the system will use the selected tracks to determine if that's going to be included in the next jump. I'm going to go to the keyboard now. Press A to go backwards. You can see the way that's snapping across the different tracks and S to jump forwards. This is a great way of accurately locating points on your timeline. It will speed up your editing. Remember, the currently selected tracks will be included in the calculation for the next jump. Let's turn off everything apart from A2. Now, as I jump backwards, only A2 is considered in the next jump. When you're working with Lightworks, always keep an eye on the selected tracks. Let's bring back in A1, click the track header. Now we're just missing out V1. Let's bring back in V1. Now all the tracks will be considered. Another useful function of ANS to jump is that it will also snap to any cue points placed in the source or edit viewers. Let's have a look at that. I'm going to drop some cue points in my source monitor. Using the apostrophe shortcut, we're going to add little green cue triangles to the scrub track at the bottom. Now, using the A key to jump backwards, we're going to snap to each cue point. S to go forwards. Another great way to quickly locate specific media points. I'm going to drop some cues in my edit. Again, I'm just going to go backwards with A. We're going to snap to the cuts. But also notice we're going to snap to the cues as well. Additionally, in and out marker points will be included in a jump function too. Let's clear the cues and mark an in and out point here. Step backwards with A and once more take us between the in and the out markers. The same functionality will be found on the timeline. There's another couple of keys that will be useful to locate the start or the end of your source or your edit material. That's the H key on the keyboard to go to the start and the semicolon key beside L to go to the end. In the source monitor, H goes to the start, semicolon goes to the end. In the edit monitor, press H, go to the top, press semicolon, go to the end. If I didn't have any cue points on my edit or source, then the A and the S key would jump to the start or jump to the end. You'll also find nudge forward and nudge backwards by single frames on the left and right cursor arrows. Each consecutive press of the cursor arrows will step you forward a frame and back. If you hold down the keys, you'll be able to play. But you won't monitor the audio. When you release, playback will stop. You may find it useful to map 10 frames forward and back on the left and right cursors using a shift modifier for example. 
Jumping 10 frames at a time, forward and backwards, is normally found on the M and the forward slash keys on the keyboard. Let's modify the keyboard shortcut profile. In your toolbox on the left, click Edit Preferences. Change the key assignments, key assignment panel opens. Go straight to the search field and search for Nudge. Click that until you find the Nudge 10 frames forward. Double click the entry, choose key panel opens, press shift and right cursor key. Press add key. Back to the search tool, press search, nudge 10 frames backwards. That's located, double click, press shift and the left hand arrow key. Press add. Okay, let's check that out. Just going to clear my marks. P on the keyboard by the way. Press shift, right arrow. Now we're jumping 10 frame increments. If you hold it down, you get a nice quick shuttle. And release. Shift and right arrow. 10 frame increments. And again, hold it down for a quick reverse shuttle. We hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.